I had this nice big empty spot in a diorama I was working on. So I used some graph paper to make sure my machine doesn't get too big and grabbed my junk. I discovered Studson Studio and Bill making stuff about a year ago and I've been hoarding trash ever since. I'm especially excited about this pump. I thought I could build this in 15 minutes and I'll let you know how long it actually takes. First up I have this magnificent piece of trash. I actually stole this cap off a beauty product I'm still using, but it was too perfect to pass up. I used Fabri-Tac glue to glue this plastic lid to this weird resin thing, I don't know what it is. I found this mesh kicking around in a drawer. Is this something scratch builders do? I don't know, I glued it on. Here's the underside of that weird resin thing, maybe it's a furniture foot or something, like a carpet slider. Whatever it is, I hot glued a bottle cap to it. I don't think hot glue is the appropriate choice, but I'm a poser, so cut me some slack. I wanted a little elevation, but this empty scotch tape roll was too much, so I hot glued some rivets to the bottom as little metal feet. It was a little unsteady with only four feet, but I have rivets to spare, so I gave it a fifth foot right in the middle. Then I didn't know what else to do, so I moved on to a second piece. This two-tier tidy bowl cap really spoke to me, and I think it'll look great combined with this pump. Here's the best footage I got of myself cutting a hole in the center of this cap. I stuck the pump tube through the hole and secured it with hot glue. I want cap and pump to look like they belong together, and I thought this bit of plastic sprue might help. It didn't. Let's just focus on cap. I got some glue sticks from Dollar Tree, but they were dried out from day one. But it's making its contribution now, because I'm using the cap to glue on top of the bottle cap that I glued on top of the other cap. Now that cap is taller, this sprue makes more sense. But it doesn't make enough sense, I'm just going to get rid of it. Cap is devastated, but I have a better idea. I want cap and pump to look like the same machine, so I squeezed out a hell of a lot of hot glue and united them using this marker cap. So far out of the seven items I've used, five of them have been caps, but this is half of a wooden wheel, and that's pretty unique. But old habits die hard because I hot glued a black pen cap to the back. I might have been subconsciously mimicking the mesh when I cut this little plastic canvas ladder looking thing. I attached it to the pump with super glue, which was my first use of an appropriate glue in this project. Pen cap, meat rivet. Found this bit of plastic on the sidewalk. I was actually wondering if it was done at this point, and it's definitely not done. So I used my super glue to lay down four dots to attach some more rivets. But I only attached three rivets because using an even amount just seemed weird. I don't know its history because I found it on the sidewalk, but it belongs right here. I'll use a bit of straw somewhere, but not right here and not right now. I topped off this rivet with some super glue and this small bead that kind of looks like a light bulb to me. This is the only item I bought, and I got them because they look like handles and they did not disappoint. This is actually more sidewalk trash. I didn't realize how often I do that. I covered it in Fabri-Tac and tried to put it in the hole, but the air kept pushing it back out, so it took a couple attempts. I got these from a Ziploc bag and the black things from a surge protector. Can you see where I put them? Would you believe I got this perfectly good buckle on the sidewalk? When in doubt, add rivets. My favorite method for making rivets is this applicator bottle I have filled with canopy glue. I added a rivet to the glue cap, a cereal box door, and a bit of straw, and it's ready for paint. First I googled whether I could use enamel paint on plastic, and then I primed it. Honestly, I was happy with how it looked right here. I could not believe that it actually looks like a machine. Okay, time for paint. My airbrush is always clogged, so I used a paintbrush and cheap acrylic paints to paint the machine. 
This was my first time painting a miniature like this and I think it turned out really well even though I only used two different metallic colors, Aztec gold and silver, as well as two browns. When I was applying the Aztec gold, I tried to skip certain sections so I could fill it in with silver paint later. In some places, I allowed the black primer to show through. Next, I started applying silver. And this is just a cheap acrylic paint. On this section, I stippled on a combination of Aztec gold and silver for a different tone despite my limited color palette. I dry brushed certain areas to emphasize the texture and create more depth. I'm really digging how this mesh turned out and it goes to show how much you can benefit by adding texture to smooth surfaces like this. With texture in mind, at some point I made tiny glue rivets for the cereal box door. I dry brushed the door with Aztec gold and retained a lot of the black. After the piece was already primed, I added a very tiny rivet to the door to look like a handle. I dry brushed some gold onto the silver to make it look tarnished. For a pop of color, I stippled some red paint onto this door to make it look like the paint was chipping. Then I added a couple more pops of color. Then I started adding my prized Vallejo paints. I started by stippling pale brown. Since I'm a first timer, I wasn't really sure where I was going with this, but I just wanted to break up some of the metallic and add more age. If you do something you don't like, you can often go back and fix it, so no worries. I tried not to apply this evenly, but make it look more random. This darker color is flat earth and I went over the pale brown in some spots. On camera, it looks a lot more mustardy than it does in real life and it dried a lot more subtle than this. It would have been better to do this next step with a natural sea sponge, but I stippled some metallic paint over the browns I just added. This technique really adds to a chipped paint effect because it makes it look like there's metal showing through the paint. Then I brighten things up with some more silver dry brushing. And then I applied a simple black wash of watered down black paint and removed the excess with a paper towel. The black wash settles and cracks in texture and is just a pro move. It also tones down the paint. I painted some cardstock gold, scribbled on it with marker, and sealed it with dimensional magic. I added a bent wire handle and paper hinges to the door as well as realistic dust. I show how to create this dusty look in my steampunk diorama video, so make sure you check it out. I am really happy with how this turned out and I will definitely be scratch building in the future, which really justifies the large amount of trash I've collected. For those wondering, it took two hours. 